as a Linux user in need of a word processor, a presentation tool, a spreadsheeting tool, and everything else, typically in an office suite, there's usually one project in mind, that being LibreOffice. Maybe some of you think of FreeOffice, and maybe a couple of you think of only Office, but the vast majority of people, it is going to be LibreOffice. But it hasn't always been the case. For any of you people who've been using Linux for a very long time, there used to be another project that everybody used, OpenOffice, and LibreOffice started as a fork of that project. Now, if you've heard of OpenOffice, originally Oracle OpenOffice, before eventually becoming Apache OpenOffice, it's pretty well established that OpenOffice is completely dead, it's discontinued, and nobody should actually go and use it. Because as LibreOffice recently put out, this project with its last actual real update was nine years ago. Today marks nine years since the last big OpenOffice update 4.1. If you're still using it, but want something more up to date, check out LibreOffice. It was based on OpenOffice and is also free and open source, but with huge improvements and many fixes. And this chart down here shows you basically the problem. So this is where they stopped updating around 2014 after pulling in updates from LibreOffice. And then from there, it's just been on 4.1 and just progressively updating 4.1. Now I say updating, but I use that term very loosely. Now the reason they put out this post is because there are still people out there who use OpenOffice. And I don't mean a small number of people. You'll see in just a moment. Now, while the last real update was nine years ago, that doesn't mean it was the last release. Latest version, 4.1.14. If we check the download page, it says right here, released 2023, February 27th. They had a release two months ago, but that's not the only recent release. Let's check out their blog. Over here, we can see something absolutely insane. There was a release in July of 2022, May of 2022. October of 2021, May of 2021. I thought the project was dead. I thought the project was discontinued. How are there still recent updates being made? Well, let's have a look at the rabbit hole, which is OpenOffice and its weird life support system the project is currently on. So, this right here is the page which links to all of the source code involving OpenOffice. And this will take us over to the OpenOffice GitHub. And as we can see, the latest commit was eight hours ago. It seems like the repo is relatively active. Please, I highly recommend you follow up on any of the links I show you because what I'm about to show you makes absolutely no sense. So this branch is the trunk. Trunk is just their name for the master branch, the main branch, whatever you want to call it. But let's go and explore some of these commits. So the last one, eight hours ago, fixed typos, removed white space. Let's see what was actually done. Okay, so you remove a random space that was here for no reason and here and here and here. Okay, I don't know why those spaces were there. You tab code that didn't need to be tabbed. Okay. You tabbed more code that didn't need to be tabbed and more code and more code. And it just keeps going on. Like, why is this tab like this? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Maybe this is just one weird commit where they're just changing white space for no reason. It says remove white space. It was clearly adding it. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Updated English Dictionary. Okay, that seems like a legitimate change actually fixing something. Fair enough. Let's have a look at uh, this one. Fix typos, remove white space. Just changing white space that shouldn't have ever existed. All right. The commit before that. Fix typo. Okay, another fix typo commit. Right. 
Another small correction. What is this one? Okay, legitimate change. Let's see another one. It's not weird to have a couple of white space commits here and there just fixing up formatting. But it gets really weird when you have a lot of them and in some cases changing formatting and making these tiny minuscule changes are the primary changes being made. If you scroll through this, there are very few functional changes actually being made. Let's go back to January of this year. Let's pick a random commit, like say, updated translation. So it's a slight spelling mistake. Fair enough, that makes sense for an updated translation. Let's see, what is this? So let's pick a random one of these. So it's updating a bunch of variables from 16-bit to 32-bit, okay. But why is that like 30 different commits? What is going on here? Let's go back to June of 2022. Fix typo. Add missing space in a string. All right. Let's go back to October of 2021. Oh, actual bug. Let's see that one. Fix typo. Remove white space. Update dictionary. Fixed a typo. Update readme with the updated version of downloads. Okay, let's see this one. Fixing something. It's flipping a minus to a plus. Okay, very minor change, but still a change. Fix typer, remove white space. Fix typer, remove white space. These weird minor commits are just the majority. If you think I'm cherry picking, just go back and look for yourself. If you do believe me though, what makes this a lot worse is how many downloads they claim to have. They claim that they have 330 million downloads and it is still going up. Since 2019, that I would assume about 50 million downloads for a project that is being maintained with these absolutely insane commits. Now, I would hope that most of that usage is in business and government contexts where you find something that works and basically you never change it. I've mentioned this story before, but I know some people who work in a call center where they're still using the same program the call center was using back when they were running DOS because it does the thing they needed to do and they never needed to change it. But... If you're a home user, you are basically using the same version of OpenOffice that was being shipped back in 2014. And the thing with Office Suites is you can run a really old version that doesn't look that old. Like, Office Suites have been pretty much good enough since around 2007-ish, so the UI doesn't really look that old. But here's the thing, new features are nice, bug fixes are nice, security patches are nice, and all of these other things which LibreOffice does are really, really nice to have. Now, I don't think there would be anything wrong if OpenOffice marketed itself as like a legacy support project. This Office Suite works the same way it worked 10 years ago, calling it like a LTS project where the LTS just extends until the end of time. This is assuming it's actually getting bug fixes and security patches in any form of a timely fashion. The issue is the way they still market themselves. They say, Apache OpenOffice, a leading open source Office document productivity suite. It hasn't been that for a really long time. The issue though, is it's still got the user base to make that claim. It's just not the user base within the FOSS space. Now, if this was just some random project by some random developer, that would be one thing. There are so many projects out there which are being half maintained that people are still actively using. But this is a project under the banner of Apache. Apache makes like actual serious things that people actively use. If they wanted to put a stop to this project, they could very easily do so. 
I don't really know what Apache is trying to achieve here. Maybe they can say, hey, look, we have this massive office suite that a lot of people are using. Maybe it helps to bring in funding from the outside. But the GitHub itself, as we saw, was not very popular. Maybe they have some contracts with some businesses and some governments, and that's helping to bring in some money. I don't really know. Either way, I would like to see this project just finally be put to rest. While OpenOffice is especially bad now, remember, it's been nine years without a proper actual update. So all the way back in 2020, LibreOffice put out this open letter. Open letter to Apache OpenOffice. It's great to have a rich and diverse set of free and open source projects. Hundreds of millions of people around the world have benefited from the choice and customization that they bring. But sometimes users can lose out when they're not aware of newer alternatives or when one brand overshadows another. OpenOffice.org, the father project of LibreOffice, was a great office suite and changed the world. That it absolutely did. It has a fascinating history, which I might do a video on at some point, but since 2014, Apache OpenOffice, its current home, hasn't had a single major release. That's right. No significant new features or major updates have arrived in over six years. Now that is nine years. Very few minor releases have been made, and there have been issues with timely security updates too. But still, many users don't know that LibreOffice exists. The OpenOffice brand is still so strong, even the software hasn't had a significant release in over nine years and is being barely developed or supported. If Apache OpenOffice still wants to maintain its old 4.1 branch from 2014, sure, that's important for legacy users. But the most responsible thing to do in 2020, now 2023, is help new users. Make them aware that there's a much more modern, up-to-date, professionally supported suite based on open office. Some people have suggested having like a banner at the top of the page linking you over to LibreOffice with many extra features that people need. We appeal to Apache OpenOffice to do the right thing. Our goal should be to get powerful, up-to-date, and well-maintained productivity tools into the hands of as many people as possible. Let's work together on that. Now, as you can probably tell from the fact that I'm making this video and OpenOffice still exists, they didn't do anything. The reason this is so important is while all of us in the FOSS world are fully aware of LibreOffice, outside of this space, people have never heard of it. And OpenOffice is a much more approachable sounding name. If you're an English speaker, you've likely never heard the word Libre before. Now, I know that's different for Spanish, French, and languages like that, but in English, Libre is not a term you ever see. And if you go search for something like free Microsoft Office alternatives, which is a totally normal thing you might search for if you want to find an alternative, let's look at the top three results. Tech Radar, Business News Daily, and LifeWire. So, Tech Radar, LibreOffice, FreeOffice, WPS Office, Caligra, Office Suite, Polaris Office, OnlyOffice, Word Perfect for some reason, Zoho Workplace, and Google Workplace. Okay, fair enough. But what about the other two? So, the first one right here, Apache Open Office. Let's go to LifeWire. Best overall, okay, okay, okay. And right here, best free software, Apache Open Office. And if you're gonna be making your choice, you're probably not making it based on one list. If you see Apache Open Office on multiple lists rated really highly, it seems like that's gonna be a good choice to go with. Do you know what this reminds me of? Those really terrible distro recommendation blog posts from a couple of years back, where they were still recommending things like SteamOS 2. At this point, it hadn't been updated in like five, six, seven years. It was not something that you should have been using. And there was a bunch of other distros on these lists which never made any sense. 
and these basically all vanished and got completely torn apart after the LTT Linux challenge. This is basically the exact same thing, but instead for Office Suites. I don't know why OpenOffice still exists, but it really shouldn't. And if you're using OpenOffice, stop. Just go and use LibreOffice. It has all of that stuff that OpenOffice could do, plus another nine years of update on top of that. It is going to be a much better experience. It's still completely free, and I highly recommend it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Would you like to see that history lesson on OpenOffice and LibreOffice? What do you run as an Office Suite? Do you even use an Office Suite? Maybe you're one of those people who do everything in LaTeX. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scrabs that we pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And this is what I want to see happen to open office. I want it to disappear. I'm out.